एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल सो टूडे ऑन वर्स आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग सम प्रोक टू क्वेश्चन विच आर बेसिकली डाउनलोड फ्रॉम द टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन बेस पेपर्स विच आर पोस्टेड इन इन न्यूट्रॉन वेबसाइट सो टूडे माई टारजेट इज टू डिस्कस एट लीस्ट टेन क्वेश्चन विद यू एक्सपेशली फ्रॉम द अप्स एंड गाइनी पार्ट सो आई हैव ऑलरेडी सेपरेटेड आउट द क्वेश्चन सो आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग द गाइनोकोलॉजी क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट सो लेट्स स्टार्ट so here the lady is having a rise in temperature to 39 degrees celsius and was registered the next day after a woman had labor so the fetal rupture took took place 36 hours prior to labor the examination of the bacterial flora of cervix showed the following there is presence of hemolytic streptococcus of group a the uterus is soft and tender and there are bloody discharges mixing with pus so we have to establish the most probable postnatal complication so here you can see there is actually a rise in temperature okay and there is already given clearly there is presence of hemolytic streptococcus of group a so this clearly gives us an idea that there is particular le some infection so before moving into the questions i just want you to know what is actually metro metro endometritis so this is basically inflammation of both endometrium and myometrium and the most common cause is streptococcus okay so basically they will result in the formation of a flappy painful uterus and you can find sporting low grade fever and all these factors okay so now coming back to our question so it is clearly mentioned there is hemolytic streptococci of group a and now uh, she was already in uh, postpartum period okay so this is the main point rest so the lady is in a postpartum period so we have to be aware of the postpartum pyrexia postpartum sepsis and all which is seen immediately after delivery so now coming to the options even if we rule out we can easily see that option a apostasis of stitches after episiotomy first of all there is no mention of episiotomy in the question okay whether the perineal cutting or tearing was done or surgical aid was done nothing is mentioned infective contamination of urinary system again the urinary system contamination will present with the urinary presentations right the burning pain the in, in tendency to urinate more and all those things again thromboplebitis of veins of pelvis see again the presentation will be very much different in thromboplebitis or veins of pelvis what happens here suppose if there is thrombus formation in pelvic veins it will definitely move forward and it will get into the pulmonary artery causing dyspnea sudden dyspnea and cough and such chest pain and such symptoms so again the presentation of question will be totally different and finally infected hematoma so there are no much history stating about the formation of hematoma so what is it metroendometritis and now we clearly know metroendometritis is basically the inflammation of um, endometrium and myometrium okay and what is the main cause of it hemolytic streptococcus of group a so i hope that part is clear now again you can find in 2013 the same question which uh, again states that uh, there is group a hemolytic streptococci again the uterus body is soft and tender so this is a similar question now let's see a different question 13 months after the first labor a 24 year old patient complained of amenorrhea okay so pregnancy entered in cesarean section because of premature detachment of normally positioned placenta which resulted in blood loss at a rate of 2000 ml owing to the disturbance of clotting factors and choose the most suitable investigation okay so this is an interesting case first of all uh, the patient has uh, the patient had her first labor 13 months back okay now after 13 months now she is having amenorrhea so basically we know amenorrhea means the absence of menstruation and there is a history of the patient having abruptio placenta okay so the placenta was prematurely detached and because of this premature detachment there was blood loss at a rate of 2000 ml okay so now they are asking we have to do the suitable investigation so before going into investigation we should have an idea about what is the diagnosis okay so i am telling here this is a pure case of shehan syndrome 
so why is it sheehan syndrome so before that you should know what is sheehan syndrome so whenever the anterior pituitary okay know that whenever the anterior pituitary undergoes necrosis due to postpartum bleeding okay so the anterior pituitary is necrotized due to postpartum bleeding this is known as sheehan syndrome understood so here there is a history of postpartum bleeding in this situation and because of this when the anterior pituitary is affected all the hormones which are produced by anterior pituitary will be decreased okay so now what happens what are the hormones produced by anterior pituitary growth hormone fsh lh tsh acth prolactin all these factors will be decreasing so when all these factors are decreased this gives us an idea that the lady is suffering from sheehan syndrome okay so now we diagnosed the case now we need to know what is the most in common or most probable investigation we have to do again progesterone assay will not give us any idea about the sheehan syndrome or the issues which are happening in uh, anterior pituitary then estimation of testosterone see this question is not about a lady having hirsutism or pcod in order to estimate her testosterone rate okay then ct of head see ct of head is done mainly for prolactinomas okay so that is in the case of pituitary adenomas so not in the case of sheehan syndrome and finally ultrasonography of small pelvis organ organs so again ultrasonography will not give us an idea about what is happening in the upper compartments okay so what is the best answer we have to check the gonadotropin rate okay so what happens exactly here when the lady is having sheehan syndrome the gonadotropins are likely to be increased so because we know that see from hypothalamus gnrh is produced this gnrh will act upon the pituitary right so let's see here about anterior pituitary and from anterior pituitary lh and fsh are produced okay so now this lh and fsh will act upon to produce progesterone and estrogen they are basically act upon ovaries right so when anterior pituitary is affected lh and fsh won't be produced right so now there is a loss of negative feedback okay so if it was properly working basically lh and fsh is supposed to uh, go for a negative feedback and control the gnrh secretion but now the secretion will not happen okay this negative feedback won't happen because of that gnrh level keep on increasing okay so this is the reason why we are estimating gnrh levels in sheehan syndrome so this is the next question and again you can see the same question in 2013 as a repeated question question number 16 is repeating in 13 months after the first labor a 24 year old woman complains of amenorrhea hemorrhage has been made as a history now we have to choose the most suitable investigation so it is the same question now moving on the next one In a woman of 24 years about earlier normal menstrual function cycles became irregular according to the test of function diagnostics okay so according to the test of function diagnostics it is turned out to be she is an ovulatory and the content of prolactin in blood is also increased so prolactin levels are increased now they are asking what is the most suitable investigation so this is totally different from the previous one right she was having a normal menstrual cycle all of a sudden she became irregular but there is no history of postpartum hemorrhage okay so there is no need to think about sheehan syndrome okay this sheehan syndrome happens only in postpartum period so here there is no such history and they clearly mention there is increased prolactin in the blood so there is something which is triggering the production of prolactin and definitely that is that will be prolactinomas okay so whenever there is a tumor which makes the pituitary to produce more prolactin it is basically known as prolactinomas so it is a secretory pituitary adenomas so always for any kind of prolactinomas we will be always doing ct of head 
again the ultrasonography will not give us any idea about the what's happening in pituitary or prolactinomas there is no purpose to do about the testosterone level progesterone as a one help and even determination of gonadotrophin's level is not needed in this case because there is no history of postpartum hemorrhage or anything okay only if it was sheehan syndrome we have to estimate the level of gonadotrophin if it is prolactinoma we will directly go for the ct of head now moving on the next question is at the gynecological department there is a patient of 32 years with the diagnosis acute bartholinitis okay so the diagnosis is given it is acute bartholinitis uh, body temperature is 38.2 degree celsius and leukocytes counts are given esr is more and in the area of big gland of vestibulum there is dermhemia basically it's uh, redness of skin and there is a sign of fluctuation seen there is sharp tenderness and what is the most correct tactics of doctor okay so here they are discussing about acute bartholinitis okay so there is an inflammation in the bartholin's gland and uh, already in the question it is mentioned that there is a sign of fluctuation now what is this sign of fluctuation sign of fluctuation means it is showing an abscess okay in this case it is bartholin gland that is why there is an abscess in bartholin gland so even if the sign of fluctuation is seen in breast obviously it will be an abscess formation in the breast okay so always in simple words remember that the sign of fluctuation means abscess okay and fluctuation is basically a tense area with a bogy mass okay how just like how abscess is looking like so obviously whenever there is abscess formation incision and drainage will be done we have to surgically di- uh, dissect it and basically it means incision and drainage is done and we have to give with supplement with antibiotics right to prevent the development of further infections so this is an easy question now comes uh, the next question an endometrial adenocarcinoma okay so this is an endometrial adenocarcinoma that has extended to uterine serosa so according to classifications how will you classify it again this is a kind of by hearting question because uh, in order to answer these sorts of question we have to properly know about the figo staging of endometrial cancer so according to the figo staging uh, when the uh, cancer moves into serosa adenexa or when it gives a positive peritoneal cytology it means it is stage 3a okay So this is a direct question we have to know about the figo staging of endometrial cancer now comes the last question so which of the for which of the methods of examination is the most informative in the diagnosis of tube infertility okay so they are asking which will be the most informative in order to diagnose infertility okay especially tube infertility so first of all we have to know that whenever a couple comes with infertility the first step the or the first test which we do is semen analysis so if if it is um, i mean if there is no issue with semen analysis then only we move forward with the other test so the next test will be we have to check whether the female is ovulating or not okay so the first one is semen analysis the second one which will be done is to find about whether the female has proper ovulation or not and then we will check about the tube for tube factors okay how is the fallopian tube whether there are any adhesions or anything and then we will check for cervical factors whether uh, there are any formation of cervical antibodies or anything okay so now they are asking what is a test you will do uh, which which is the most informative test okay so first for that first you need to know when you have to get a clear idea about tube factors leading to infertility the first step which is always done is hysterosalpingography okay so remember this is the first test done to visualize the tubal patency but in this question they are particularly asking which is the most informative so out of all these the most informative will be laparoscopy with chromosalpingoscopy so this is basically we are even inducing a particular dye inside the tube and then we are accessing the tube properly so that we can even see 
वी कैन इवन फाइंड इवन इफ देर इज एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ पेरिटोनियल और पेल्विक लशंस ओके सो दिस इज वाई दिस इज द मोस्ट इन्फॉर्मेटिव बट इन केस इफ दे वेर आस्किंग विच इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप आई मीन और द फर्स्ट टेस्ट डन टू विजुअलाइज द ट्यूबल पेटेंसी ऑब्वियसली इट विल बी हिस्टर ऑफ सेल्पिंगोग्राफी here is a one more question in which there is a difference so i'll just go through that uh, in the gynecological office a 28 year old woman complains of sterility within 3 years the menstrual function is not impaired okay so that means she is ovulating she don't have an ovulation so no an ovulation there were one artificial abortion and chronic salping of ovaritis in her case history oral contraceptives were not used were not used her husband's analysis of semen is without pathology so what i said the first the first one which we do will be semen analysis right so that is also fine no issues in semen analysis she is not an ovulating then the next factor which we have to check is obviously about the fallopian tube so they are asking what diagnostic method will you start from the workup in this case so as i said always remember semen analysis is the first workup then we check for ovulatory dysfunction then we check for tube dysfunction so out of that tube dysfunction hysterosalpingography is always the first step taken okay but the most informative is chromosalping along with chromo intubation okay chromo pertubation basically we are just inducing some color also that is the most informative But the first step taken will be always hysterosalpingography. So that's all for today. So I'll be discussing ten questions each day from two thousand thirteen gynecology question base paper. So today I'll be discussing all the gynecology questions first. So once we finish through gynecology questions, we can move towards the obstetric questions from the same base. So that's it for today. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,